Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will discuss peer-to-peer -peer component architecture. And uh, in the peer-to-peer -peer component architecture, as you can see on this slide, that we have actually two major uh, components. Or you can say that one is called uh, the user processor and second one is called the data processor. And you can see <coughs> the user will generate a request. Uh, obviously, when I say a user make a request, it means user can generate queries, user can generate uh, run uh, applications based on this particular data which is being organized let's suppose in terms of peer-to-peer -peer component architecture so user generates a query or an application and that actually that is being received first of all at the user processor end and at the user processor end the first component which is there it is called user interface handler or a ui handler what is the task of ui handler the ui handler will receive the request and uh, uh, it will make a check on that particular request based on number one the syntactical check uh, for example whether the query is based on the syntax uh, of uh, sql uh, number two uh, it will evaluate in terms of semantics so user interface handler uh, is uh, actually you can see on the top uh, it basically linked with external schema why because the external schema defines the user view so since the external schema defines the user view so from there we know exactly what type of uh, user uh, requirements and what type of information users may generate through the external schema which is available to the users so uh, once the synth syntactical check is done then it will move toward the semantic data controller the task of the semantic data controller is to evaluate in terms of the global conceptual schema normally we call as gcs which we are we have also discussed in the previous class the gcs gives you the overall uh, schema of the whole application and that is why it is called the global conceptual schema because we we talked about uh, the distributed environment or a fragmented databases so the global conceptual schema has the complete definition of that particular database so semantic data controller checks the uh, 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 schema uh, gcs and then uh, it will pass on to the global query optimizer so once it is verified once uh, then the trees will be generated and obviously whenever we talk about the trees uh, in a relational database environment so uh, it based on the ra component that is called the relational algebra so based based on the relational algebra the um, queries will be generated and whenever we talk about generation of uh, queries or generation of a tree sorry generation of a tree then it is also important to go for the optimization because uh, there are several combinations which are possible there are several paths which are there uh, how we can reach out to a particular uh, data uh, so uh, the, the placement of various operations gives you various paths so what is the task of the optimizer the optimizer is basically um, uh, basically evaluates uh, the minimal cost of the tree or you can say the best possible path which may be generated to find out uh, the particular data uh, and uh, since uh, the optimizer should know where the data is located so therefore uh, the uh, it refers to gd gd stands for global directory sometimes we call it global directory and sometimes we call it only directory so global directory uh, basically has um, all the entries uh, of the database so from there the optimizer basically takes the information and uh, optimize the path and then it passes on to the global execution monitor the task of the global execution monitor is to execute because whenever we talk about the execution of queries uh, it is based on uh, two uh, concepts uh, or you can say uh, it is uh, always concurrent in nature and 
uh, obviously the uh, two important ways by which that uh, execution will be monitored is based on the inter-query parallelism and the intra-query parallelism. When I say an inter-query parallelism, it means the queries break into subparts and all those parts will be executed uh, in parallel. And when we talk about uh, the execution intra-query parallelism, then it means that various queries have been generated by various users, which, all, which are also parallel in nature. So once the query optimizes, then the global execution monitor actually monitors how that data can be retrieved from various local sites. Uh, and all these local sites uh, are basically uh, means that your distribution, let's suppose you have distributed it to three, four, five, or even all the sites. So that uh, global execution from global execution monitor, it passes on to the local query processor. And when I say local query processor, it means uh, uh, the, the sub part of the query sent to a particular localized site where that particular data is uh, um, uh, stored. So local query processor will run the query based on the local conceptual schema. And what is LCS? LCS is actually a schema of uh, the component which is residing on a particular site. So it receives information uh, from the local conceptual schema and then it will go for the recovery. And for the recovery, uh, it, the information is required from the system log because at the localized site, all the information is available at the system log. And from the system log, that information is passed on to the next component that is called runtime support processor. So the task of the runtime uh, uh, support processor is to execute uh, that particular query. Uh, and uh, when I say to execute the query, it means that generation of an access path and uh, to look for the localized internal schema, the physical schema, because uh, uh, only then that data can be uh, re received from that particular drive you can see uh, in the end. So the data is being received or saved at particular site based on the LIS. So every localized site has its own LCS and LIS. So uh, then that data will be retrieved and that data will be sent back to the local query processor and from there uh, from the global execution monitor, it passes back to the user. So it means the user can view the data, whatever the request has been generated. So in that in that manner, that peer-to-peer uh, -peer component architecture works. So so whenever we are talking about any architecture, it is very important to know actually how it works, what are the important components of the architecture, and how they are related. So in this model, you can see yourself that the whole picture explains that what are the interfaces, what are the major components, what are the subcomponents, and how uh, it actually works. So this is peer-to-peer -peer component architecture. Now we can see the next architecture, which is called data logical multi-DBMS architecture. The data logical multi-DBMS architecture uh, is basically an architecture which says that uh, basically it is based on the same architecture of uh, three schema three schema architecture which we have discussed earlier on but what is the difference between these two uh, the data logical uh, dbms arch uh, distributed architecture and data logical multi dbms architecture is that in this architecture it is also possible that we might have the own external schema of the particular sites. It means you can see it in blue as well, that localized external schema of LCS1 and let's suppose localized schema for particular LCS and M. So this is what this represents. This represents the, uh, the, the, uh, the user view. So it means that particular sites might have their own uh, uh, definition of the data, which may not be required by the other sites uh, in that particular environment. So it means that we, we have the global external schema as well and we have the localized external schema as well. Uh, previously, 
uh, in the datalogical distributed architecture, we didn't have the localized external schemas. So there, we, in the multi-DBMS architecture, this, it is possible. So uh, multi-DBMS architecture believes in a model where we might have various databases running on various sites. So some databases might have only the localized information which is important at that particular site. So they might need, they might need a separate localized external schema uh, or definition of the external schema so that they can easily access that data. So this is the concept of datalogical multi DBMS architecture. So, uh, so it is again uh, based on the previous principle. And the same multi DBMS components or, or architecture or their execution can be seen over, also here on this diagram. You can see that we have a multi DBMS layer. It means you have more than one databases running on various sites. So you have a multi DBMS layer. Let's suppose it is DBMS one, it is DBMS two and DBMS three. So, uh, so in that model, you have the global request as well and you have a local request as well. So locus, local request, which is based on a particular database running on a particular site means that it will be generated from the users, which are obviously uh, there at that particular site. So we have the global request as well, and we have the local request as well. That is basically the uh, basic uh, concept of um, MDBMS or multi database system architecture, distributed architecture. So, so we have gone through with various architectures and we can see that uh, how it works. So uh, in this uh, chapter, we have gone through with the various architectures, including the datalogical DBMS architecture, this one, where we have only have the external schemas. Then we have the GCS, the global conceptual schema. And based on that GCS, we might have various uh, local conceptual schemas running on the various sites. And for each local conceptual schema, we have must have a local internal schema, which is there, you can see at the end. And in this model, that is called peer-to-peer -peer component architecture, which we have just discussed, where we have the user processor and the data processor, and we have various components. And uh, you can see that how the information flows from one component to another and how these components are interlinked uh, and how it works. So that is peer-to-peer -peer component architecture. Whenever we have that concept of peer-to-peer, -peer, one thing comes in our mind that there is no particular concept of uh, uh, server. So every machine can act as server uh, and uh, at the same time can act as a client. And that is uh, the, uh, the, the datalogical multi DBMS architecture. And you can see the difference of datalogical multi DBMS architecture with datalogical DBMS architecture here. The localized sites uh, does not have their own external schemas. So there is a generalized definition. There is a generalized external schema. And you can see that every request is considered as a global request. So here you can see they have their localized external schema, it means the user at that particular site might have their individual requirements and their individual requirements uh, or user views have been generated in this particular model. So that is about various architectures uh, and uh, you'll go through with the chapter in detail and see that how uh, these architectures work and in which environment uh, which architecture is more suitable Thank you.